Hey, and uh, welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to cover the object-oriented concept of inheritance when working with our code. Now, although it can be considered a good approach for code reuse, it's not always the way to go, for reasons we'll discuss later on. But for now, let's use the game example of constructing a hypothetical player for our game called Riley, just to put it into practice. For now and future lessons, we'll be migrating from the action script language to Hacks and the OpenFL Flash API. Links can be found in the description. First of all, we want our player to have the property's name and the direction he is currently facing. Let's give this player some methods. Stand, walk, and talk. Now, in our main class, which is called first on compilation, we can create a new instance of Riley and call the methods. First, we call talk, that requires no parameters. Then stand, passing in the parameter of the direction. Finally, walk, passing in the number of steps to take and in what direction. When we build this project with the HTML5 target, we can see in the console our traced output. Great, so we've built a class and made a new instance of it. But with this game, we have two protagonists and we've only built a class for one of them. We also need one for Jack. The exact same functionality is required. We want Jack to stand, walk and talk. So, our first instinct is to create a new class called Jack copy everything from Riley and paste it into Jack's class file. We create a new instance of Jack and we can see that we get the expected behavior in the console. The thing is, they both share the exact same code. The only differences between them is their name, Riley and Jack. Duplicate code exists and you can see how this would be an issue if we introduced more protagonists. So, what would be a possible solution to this? We can make use of inheritance. With this, we can specify a superclass that both players can extend from. So, first things first, let's create the superclass. In this class, we want all the code that's relevant to both protagonists. We will call this superclass player. We copy and paste all the code from one of the existing players and tweak it so it's relevant. In this case, it's not setting the name, so we initialize it, but don't set it. Now, if we go back to our Jack and Riley classes, we can remove all the boilerplate code, leaving behind the constructor function and make the name change. When we call super in the constructor, it will call the constructor of its parent. This means we don't have to trace the name of the player and the direction they're currently facing. Remember to call the super method after you have declared your attributes in the subclass. When we have made this change for both subclasses, Riley and Jack, you'll see that even if we call them, they both work like before, as seen in the console. As mentioned earlier, inheritance can be suitable in some cases and does promote code reuse and code organization, but isn't always suitable. You'd usually begin each coding problem by constructing some form of inheritance hierarchy that may not actually be suitable for that certain situation. An example being a zoo park with many types of animals. Your task is to design a class for each animal in that park, taking into account their attributes and behaviors. They have a tiger and a lion that can both jump. So you create a superclass named animal with a method jump to cater for them both. We can now make a tiger and lion class and extend from the animal superclass. But what about an elephant? They can't jump. So if we create a new elephant class and extend from animal, it's not relevant. In a situation like this, we need to consider composition over inheritance, something we will discuss in the next lesson. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the SMKS channel.